welcome to Drive Your Diversity Sourcing with Seekout. First, we'll uh, introduce myself and our guest speaker. Um, so I'm a customer success manager at Seekout. Prior to this role, approximately 10 years of combined experience in recruiting and sourcing. I started at a nationwide recruiting agency and also corporate recruiting before transitioning into the customer success role where I uh, now train users on how to use Seekout. And then also very happy to introduce Gage Nordloff over at West Monroe. He's a Chicago land native and a graduate of DePaul University. We've been working together for the past several months um, as West Monroe is one of our recently onboarded accounts and they've shown a lot of success and specifically Gage has some uh, things to share about his experience in our partnership, uh, which is going to you know, be the topic of this discussion. Again, feel free to ask any questions or chat throughout. And um, I'm gonna start with a quick overview of Seekout and then he'll get in, into his presentation specifically. So for Seekout's capabilities, um, we provide some of the best in class Boolean search capabilities. So you can uh, think of Seekout as a search engine, a candidate search engine, and we'll go out and scour the web for any publicly available information on candidates and cross-reference any information that we can find on, let's say their LinkedIn profile with 37 other social media, aggregate that and to consolidate it into a single profile that you can search using keywords, Boolean, advanced Boolean. You can use filters to narrow down by location and other, you know, there's, there's specific filters where you can find specific experience that someone lists and then other things that they, in, that we can infer about their experience, like diversity, um, clearance, security clearance level, et cetera. Those are some things that maybe someone doesn't explicitly put on their profile, but we can determine based on other things like, you know, their job title and their company name, if they had that title, then they probably have a certain level of clearance, et cetera. Um, so you can use those to find candidates. We have power filters that are pre-built searches on the back end so that even a brand new source or recruiter can just pop in a seek out, click on a power filter and find all kinds of different, let's say Java developer candidates without having to know you can put Java or J2EE or JEE or Java Enterprise Edition. You don't have to worry about adding huge Boolean or statements or adding a bunch of things to a list. Just click on the power filter and it'll do the search for you. You can also create custom power filters for, let's say you have a competitor list um, and you'd like to make a large or statement and just put all that together in one click of a search so that anytime you onboard new team members, it's already ready to go. We have that function available. Um, and you can help build those out by contacting your customer success manager directly. Um, so we also have those diversity filters that I mentioned previously. You can narrow down by female, Hispanic, Black or African American, Asian, veteran, um, inferring that based on different things in their profile, like pronouns used, um, first names globally, and not just babies' names, etc. cetera. Uh, we have GitHub and expert licenses, which are add-ons to our um, over 600 million public candidate database. If you go with premium tech, you can get access to search those 29 million GitHub profiles specifically. And then for expert, you can search Google Scholar and Microsoft Academic profiles. Um, those are gonna be add-on packages from the premium, but they are available. And a lot of customers end up using those because it's not available anywhere else. Um, you can find, if you find the perfect candidate, you can clone that candidate and find other ones similar and go ahead and vote on those. Um, and narrow down your results that way. It's just a whole brand new way of searching where you can use a single candidate or a group of candidates and just will parse out the information and find similar people for you. We have insights, which uh, will constantly update while you search and give you a bird's eye view of the talent landscape. So if I'm searching for a specific skill set, I can see all the locations of those candidates. I can see all the companies and I can even click on those little graphs and and narrow down my search that way and export those to share with a hiring manager to become more of a talent advisor. And let's say, you know, the educational requirement requires a master's degree, but only 10% of the candidate pool has a master's. You could mention that in your intake meeting and see if they'd like to flex a little bit. 
based on what's available in the market. We have projects that you can share your, not only your candidates to, but also your search strings so that you can continue to act on those candidates by getting their email and phone number or you know, go back into that same search and find more that are along the same lines. Uh, we can get candidate contact information live, and this is personal emails and phone numbers in addition to any work contact information that we can find. We partner with about eight different contact finding solutions. So when you click get email or get phone in Seek Out, we're gonna go out live and retrieve that information for you and um, put it right on top of that uh, uh, candidate profile so that you can go ahead and reach out um, with all the information handy from all their different social media links. We have a Chrome extension called Seek Out Sourcing Assistant that you can use to cross collaborate between different platforms. Let's say you're on a LinkedIn profile, you can just click on the Chrome extension, add them to a project from there, uh, get their email, get their phone number right within the extension and supplement any existing messaging that you may have going out to them with a text, a call or a personal email. Um, we also have a little uh, button at the bottom right, little blue smiley face uh, to get help. If you ever need immediate support, um, we're available 20 hours of the day um, from, five, from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific and then 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Pacific. Um, or you can always email support at seekout.io. And uh, yeah, Seekout's mission is to provide customers competitive edge and recruiting hard to find and diverse talent for digital transformation. And uh, we do that through all of these different capabilities. Um, today, Gage is gonna be going through specific examples of how he used Seekout. And, uh, and uh, so our agenda is gonna be, you know, introducing, going over West Monroe, giving a quick introduction into what they do, um, how Gage and other recruiters at West Monroe have used diversity tags to hone in on specific diverse candidate pools, um, leveraging people insights, as I mentioned on the previous slide, to inform stakeholders and improve sourcing strategy, and how to increase your response rate by gathering personal contact info with Seekout. So um, Gage, go ahead, take it away. Awesome, thanks for the introduction. Uh, very excited to be here uh, in the spirit of vulnerability, my first webinar. So almost as nervous as excited, hopefully it doesn't show too much, but uh, thankfully of the 400 people who signed up, only half of you are here live. So only half of you can kind of laugh at me throughout this process. But no, um, honestly, it's been an awesome partnership. Pretty early stages still. I think we started working with them on a trial period in the fourth quarter, but um, I'll go through a lot of those things he might just outline in terms of capabilities. So first, you know, the best part about being participating to host a webinar with one of your vendors is you get to talk about your company. So uh, for those of you who don't know West Monroe yet, uh, you definitely will. Um, we are a high growth business and technology consulting firm. Here's a map showing our offices. We're headquartered in Chicago, but as you can see, we're all across the country. Uh, we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary next year, which is very exciting. But one of the reasons we use a tool like Seekout is because of our extreme amount of growth. So, you know, more than 1,500 employees today, but growing rapidly. We've already hired 372 people. It's more than that at this point this year with an acceptance rate of over 84%, which is really fantastic. Um, you know, 80% of our 2020 interns actually get converted to 2021 full-time hires. And then in April, we surpassed 50% of our 2021 hiring plan. So as you can see, you know, you know, we're on pace for just under 600 hires. It's been an incredible start to 2021. We need partners like Seekout to help us achieve these goals. But a little bit more about us, I think the things that make us special, right? We're 100% employee owned. You know, this is a key differentiator. It's a major reason why I joined the firm. Uh, it's more than a financial reward. It really drives our people first culture. And then we also have a really strong emphasis on making a positive impact on our, our communities as well. You know, we've done over a million dollars in pro bono project work, you know, over 9,000 volunteer hours a year. And we've even done over 800,000 in public donations as a firm. Um, the last thing I'll highlight on this slide is just, you know, we are a national firm, but we do have a uh, partnership for global clients at, with Bearing Point in Europe. Um, this is this slide here is one of my favorite slides about West Monroe. You know, I'll, I'll read this part out, out because I think it's important. You know, we work with diverse multidisciplinary teams made up of industry, operational, and technical experts 
who break down silos and create quantifiable financial value for our clients. I know boring reading right off a slide, but I think it's important. Uh, hit on sp specifically that bold part. We don't just come to the table with you know, what we're going to do from a you know, qualitative standpoint. We always lead with that quantifiable financial value for our clients. And it's a big reason why we're successful. Um, the other thing to highlight on this slide, so if you look over on the right side, over at the top, you're gonna see a breakdown of the core industries that we work within. Um, you're also gonna see over to the right on the middle, um, the different functional expertise areas and then the bottom, the technical expertise areas that we bring um, our level of expertise to, to the clients that we serve. So it, just looking at those industries and looking at the areas that we focus, you know, a major reason why we've continued to grow throughout even the pandemic is because our deep roots in technology and our expertise in er areas and industries that have also grown throughout the pandemic. Um, and then finally, on West Monroe, you know, as we work toward building a more inclusive and diverse workplace, you know, we, we lean on our employee resource groups that help foster those principles and help bring our organizational mission, our values and our strategy to life. Um, you can see them highlighted there in the middle of the screen, you know, and as we partner to the left there, we, we, we have really fantastic partners that help guide us and, and help us get to where we wanna go in achieving our hiring goals. Um, and I think it's important to note, you know, because of tools like Seekout, we are currently tracking at or above our diversity hiring goals in all of our categories. Um, that's cool to say today, um, but you know, like most companies, we're not celebrating that. You know, we have a long way to go, uh, which is why we continue to invest in tools like Seekout to help us grow and get us to where we want to be. So we're gonna open up with a poll here. Let me see if I can not mess this up. So I'm gonna launch it here. Go ahead and uh, everybody who's attendance, go ahead and uh, fill out your answer. Mike, can you see? Yeah, okay. I see people are starting to respond. Yep. Yeah, I can see it just now. Looks like we're getting a lot of responses in. Thanks, everybody. Yep. So as you can see, the question is, what is your top sourcing challenge in 2021? We've got getting candidates to respond. We've got finding niche skills. We've got finding diverse talent and then leveraging data to improve your recruitment process. So I'll go ahead and give just another second. We've got most people. Maybe we'll get to 100 there. I think that's pretty good. We have a decent idea here. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share the results. So you, you can see the results, I believe so. Yes, yes. So that was about like 101 people responded. Um, and I can see the breakdown as well. So looks like the front runner is getting candidates to respond. I think everyone should be able to see this as well. Yeah, this is perfect. I mean, it looks pretty, yeah, getting cancer respond. I'm actually shocked by it. Um, and I will address that literally on the one of the last slides that I talk about. But, you know, I think it's really safe to say, I guess, I guess leveraging data to improve your recruitment process, maybe not for this group. I'm going to challenge you on that with some of the slides that I put together here. But I, I think it's safe to say that while one of these might be your top sourcing challenge, we probably, if we had the option to, would have all chose, you know, two, maybe three, maybe all of them. So I'll use the rest of the time to kind of go through, you know, how West Monroe is tackling these challenges uh, using Seekout. So the first slide I'm going to get to, you know, hone in diverse candidate pools with diversity tags. So, you know, I think like most recruiters or talent acquisition professionals, when you sit on these sales meetings with people like Mike and they're trying to tell you how they can solve world problems, you know, you come in a little bit skeptical. Um, this right here was the very first thing that I was blown away by with Seekout is their diversity tag. So you can see a picture on the left there. It shows the different tags, but it's because I've yet to come across another sourcing tool that offers such, I would just say, a simple user-friendly approach to ser searching for these demographic groups. You know, their diversity tags, they use machine learning and AI to classify candidates into appropriate categories, and their current position and recall is above 90%. Um, in fact, you know, I highlighted it here on this slide, but, you know, Seekout finds 2.2 times more female candidates and 5.8 times more Black candidates or African-American candidates than competing sourcing tools. Um, I think that's pretty incredible, a 90% recall, and then some of the stats they have to kind of back it up. Um, and I, like everybody else, like if you're a sourcer on this call or a recruiter on this call, you know, we're all guilty of using some of these old school tactics. You know, I remember sitting in the train, one of the first trainings I did when I got into recruiting in 2014, and it was, you know, searching for, you know, top female candidates by the top 100 female names, or, 
you know, we've even run uh, searches and campaigns to target, you know, black uh, college students at HBCUs. And I actually sat on a webinar hosted by Seekouts Diversity Leader a few weeks back. Some of you probably got to do that as well. And she shared some pretty crazy stats that blew my mind. And it, I would say, if you walk away with anything, walk away with just kind of th these numbers in mind. If you search for female candidates based on the top 100 female names, you're only getting 20% of all female candidates. And within that pool, it's predominantly white, right? If you go and you're searching for just, you know, black college students and you're solely targeting HBCUs, that's only 9% of black college students in the country. You know, I'd rather have 90% recall on a large population than 9% of the total group that you're fishing within. It's just not, it's not effective ways for searching for these diverse candidates. So, you know, we piloted Seek Out for two weeks back in December. Um, I'm, if you haven't used the tool yet, hopefully some of this stuff will get you excited about it. But in that two week period, we added I, as a ridiculous number of candidates into our ATS, countless numbers of candidates, you know, that we weren't seeing in some of our search sourcing strategies from other tools. We actually, in those two weeks, identified two hires, one of which was a senior level leader in our firm and a role that was open for more than two years. Um, so this instant success was a deal breaker for us. You know, we went from, I think, 10 licenses to doubling that number almost instantly. And then, you know, I can personally say a position that I filled in partnership with our sourcing team this year um, was our head of IND. I think they marketed it for the webinar, but our head and our leader for IND at West Monroe, you know, she came from using these filters um, in Seek Out. And we've been working on that search for maybe three months prior to even having access to the tool. Um, and the last thing I'll highlight on this slide here is that image at the bottom. So you can see it's a profile picture with a cat. You've got the, instead of the candidate's name, the initials, it's no secret here, this is my profile, but Seek Out, offer, uh, Seek Out also offers a blind hiring mode. Um, and that's what it would look like if you turn it on. You know, unconscious bias is real. It's talked about like crazy. We've all been in trainings on it. And any little thing you can do to help address that unconscious bias is going to help you when it comes to sourcing and recruiting for diverse talent. And so I, I like that image. I wanted to share it because I think that it's a good uh, way to kind of help mitigate some of that. So the second thing I'll talk about is that people insights. And so that that 4%, I think it was on the poll where people were talking about, you know, using leveraging data to inform your sourcing strategy it doesn't seem like it's top of mind. I can tell you it is like one of the most top of mind things for me every day in the role that I'm in. So, you know, Seekout's People Insights offers a bird's eye view of any talent pool. Um, you can see aggregate data about candidate locations, uh, their employers, their titles, their skills, their employment history, diversity, and more. Um, so I took three screenshots and images um, from a, a search I did a few weeks back. So this is a pretty simple example I'll talk through here. Um, this information is a, from a People Insights um, report. I was looking for uh, Black or African-American director level talent at some of our top competitors, so 25 other consulting firms that we would compete with for talent. So the graph at the top left, you can see on the left, there's two graphs and on the right, there's the one, the two on the left are for Chicago and the one on the right is for national. So, but we'll start with that top left graph. So that is just our top 25 competitors in the Chicago market broken down by the diversity tags that you can see in Seekout. So something that jumps out right away, 1.1 thousand candidates classified as black or African-American. Um, at the bottom left, uh, that graph just shows the total number of those candidates at the director level um, in, in the Chicago market still. So what you'll see there, if you can't see it, I'll, I'll just tell you, it says eight. That should make you wanna pass out. So if you're looking at like targeting a specific demographic pool of candidates and, and you realize of the top 25 firms we're competing with at these exact, like these director or leadership positions, there's eight candidates in Chicago. Woof. Uh, so that's a that's a real gut punch, right? So then what I did on the right is the, a graph nationally, and that's going to show you the total number of Black candidates at the director level nationally. So you can see right away, okay, in Atlanta, there's 106. In New York, it's just a fraction of a percentage point less, so there's probably about 100. 
DC, we've got more Houston, we've got more. So we've got, you know, four other markets with more candidates. So I use these graphs because I think it's really, it's a really easy story to tell, right? So eight candidates tells you a story right away from a sourcing strategy. I need to expand into additional markets, right? And, and, and that's just blatantly evident. Um, but it also gives me the power to really inform my stakeholders, right? So what, what does this tell me? You know, our search timeline, it's not going to be quick. Um, when we do finally find a candidate that we like, we're going to need to be aggressive when it comes to that offer stage. And then, you know, we probably are going to need to require relocation assistance, right? We don't have an offer. For this example, I don't, we don't have an office in Atlanta. So it's important for us to consider that if we're finding candidates in those other locations. Um, but in talking with even our DEI leader, you know, leveraging the insights, enhancing your sourcing strategy, educating your stakeholders, that's just the very beginning. In most cases, you need to change the way you think about diverse candidates, right? They might be, in, the thing I always tell myself is they might be in smaller percentages, but they're out there. And so what are you going to do to find them? And how are you going to leverage the insights to do so? But then it's, it, there's that part of you kind of training yourself, but it's, it's teaching your stakeholders, right? They need to also think more abstractly about how we identify these candidates, right? And so Western Rule, I can give you some really specific examples. You know, we look at people outside of consulting. One of the high growth practices that I support from a recruiting perspective, over half of my hires this year um, have come from industry. And I would say 75 to 80% of my overall hires for this group have fallen within some of our diversity categories. Um, from a college degree standpoint, we, you know, we used to have that on all of our job descriptions. You know, we removed that. Some of our partners in, that we partner with from a diversity recruiting perspective, like they inform us, hey, maybe that's not inclusive. And so that's a lot from an industry where we really pride ourselves in ongoing education and advanced degrees um, to make that kind of adjustment as a firm, especially in technology, that's the place we play. There is a ton of really high qualified candidates who maybe don't have the traditional education background, but have the advanced technology skill set. So removing that from our job description helps us get a more inclusive pool of candidates as well. Um, you know, maybe your firm offers can offer to hire roles 100% remote in different locations. You know, we do that across some positions. Um, but, you know, not all of them, but if it's a position that can, you know, this is a good way to find where those people might be. Um, and then finally, the, another thing I'll hit on from, you know, opening up the mindset of your stakeholders, right? Don't penalize, you know, the returning to work mother who's coming back to the workforce after taking time off to raise her family. She has legitimate, impressive skills and experience prior to that time off. Maybe there are some new technologies that came out during the break. Can you train that person on that stuff? Do they have the core, in our case, consulting skills that it takes to be successful? Because if so, let's let's ignore that gap and let's just like interview the candidate and focus on the experience they bring to the table. And then remember, we can train on a lot of things as well. So needless to say, every company, we're all competing for talent. We're all trying to achieve these diverse hiring goals. So, you know, be open-minded. You got to explore getting out of your, uh, you know, historical ways that you've done things. And so for me, while it came up lowest on the um, the poll, I do think it's one of the more important things is this, this people insights and leveraging this data. It tells a story on how you can improve your overall strategy. And then lastly, you know, for this slide here, Mike was talking about, you know, the partners that they use to get these phone numbers and these emails, right? Getting this personal contact information is a big differentiator. So, you know, I, it was in the bio, but I did training for two years, uh, onboarding and training almost 300, you know, recruiters and sourcers, teaching them kind of the agency way of life. Um, one of the fundamental things that I would try to drill in everyone's brain right away was yes is good no is good, nothing is bad, right? We're all kind of trained to think that a no is, is a bad thing. Um, in recruiting, no is fantastic. No means I can leave you alone. I don't have to keep hunting. You got back to me. There's a conversation that started and maybe we can turn this into something down the line. So if you remind yourself, you know, yes is good, no is good, nothing is bad, then you're really focused on mitigating the non-responses. And so how do you do that? Every recruiter is going to be using LinkedIn Recruiter, right? It's, it, we all use those tools, okay? But that means all of these high quality candidates are also getting contacted for, via in-mail. 
So you need to find different ways to get to these people. So this feature on Seekout, right, you can leverage their email and get their phone number and you could get that chance to kind of get in the door and, and make that impact. So getting that contact information, you know, that info is just the first step. You know, you got to set yourself apart with impactful messaging. So I did the agency life for six years. I did the 300 cold calls a week. You know, majority of my hires were sourced hires. Uh, and I can tell you safely, hand to heart, I'm not doing 300 cold calls a week. Blessing Road, talent acquisition team isn't that intense. We're intense, but not that intense. Uh, but what I can say is I'm not afraid to get on the phone still, especially if I'm going after really hard to find talent. And so two things that I'll point out with, you know, just kind of old school tactics that I was kind of taught and that I continue to train as I onboard and train recruiters is your tone and energy in the voicemail. That's as important as the message is. If you leave a voicemail and you sound like you don't want to leave a voicemail, you are not getting a call back. That's, that's very obvious. If you call somebody and they answer the phone and you don't sound excited to be talking to them, they're going to hang up with you on you or just tell you they can't talk. So bringing that energy, I think is really, really important. The second thing I'll highlight uh, from a voicemail standpoint, even a phone call when you get somebody live, I never would advise leading with your name and who, where you're calling from, right? Hi, you know, hi, Mike, this is Gage from West Monroe. That is the second in the voicemail, your voicemail gets deleted because now they know who you are. And now they know why you're calling. Maybe they never heard about West Monroe. Or they don't, they think you're just trying to sell something. That is the end of it. Um, and so for me, it's all about starting with the candidate's name and the reason why you're calling, you know, I might, the reason I'm calling is because what this does is it allows you to get kind of through that next level of the gatekeeping on a, on a voicemail or, or message. They don't know who you are. They're, they're like, who is this? Why are they calling? Um, and so they're, they're at least going to hang on to at least hear that part of it. And if you can get them with that value prop, the reason I'm calling today um, you might have a better odds of getting them to call you back or you'll have them more engaged on the front end of the call. Um, and then finally, with the email side of these things, right? So there's tons of content online. We all know about this content. You could, you could leverage, um, just Google best recruiting you know, emails and subject lines. But I'll, I'll highlight some of the ones that, some of the main points that I like to make or that we kind of practice here. So having that impactful subject line, that's huge. So um, it's funny, my, my wife's also in talent acquisition and we talked about, uh, I, I told her I was gonna use some of our, our go-to, I should say our go-to, nothing's that unique where we're the only ones using these subject lines, but we battle on whether or not we should share our best ones because we're all competing for talent. But I'll tell you the two that I have, I have a lot of success with and maybe you can leverage those as well. But the first one is I'll use somebody's name at our company. So in this case, if I'm trying to get older, Mike, I'd say Mike at Western Row would be my subject line. Sounds kind of crazy. Like, why would that work? Um, I could tell you the differentiator and just calling out somebody's name in the subject line, it, it immediately tells the candidate that it's not a mass mail, right? Unless I'm only sourcing for mics, uh, then, you know, th if that's what they're thinking, no candidate thinks that, then that's one thing. But honestly, using that, that tends to get me a pretty high response rate. And the second thing um, I'll do is usually say, what's next after fill in the blank, the company they're working at question mark. And it's another way, right? I'm, I'm specifically calling out your company. Granted, I could be mass mail, in mailing or, or emailing candidates all at one company. But um, the idea here is the candidate feels like, oh, you looked at my profile, you realize you know, who I am, where I'm from, and, and it's giving them a question to answer. What's next, right? So some of the other bullets to hit on here, get to the point and quickly explain the why behind your messaging. Um, you know, it's the same thing with the voicemail tactic. Hey, the reason I'm calling is X, Y, Z. Uh, finally, you know, or I guess not finally, but personalize that message, um, have something specific in their background and create a conversation, the call to action, have something, right? Um, you know, would you be open to an introductory call in the next couple of weeks? Uh, you know, give them something to answer and address and then follow up and don't give up. You know, I think this is recruiting 101. It's oftentimes when we're the busiest is when we forget to do this piece, but it, it always works. You know, every two weeks I'll go back and the only sourcing messages I'll leave are the candidates that I've had zero response from. And so you turn a 0% response rate into, and a lot of times 30%, 40% response rate just by hitting them again with even more specific messaging. And so again, 
he, he uh, Mike talked about it on the front of the call, this is a really great feature, that email and get that phone number. We can use these tactics that we've all grown up learning and recruiting, um, and we can get and, and break through the barrier of all the candidates. So those are kind of the main things that I wanted to talk about, right? So hitting on that contact information, leveraging the people insights to tell a more uh, impactful story to adjust your sourcing strategy and inform your stakeholders, and then using their diversity tags. I mean, we're all looking for diverse talent. Everybody is. And so finding the easiest way to get to those talent pools is, is I, I don't know why you wouldn't want to take advantage of it.